Hello, first grade. Welcome back to Literacy with Miss Dorsey. I have a riddle for you. What's black and white and red all over? The answer is our book for this week. So the book this week is titled Emma Kate and the author is Patricia Polacco. So I said that riddle was black and white and red all over because you'll notice in the illustrations in this book that most of the illustrations are black and white with little pops of red and other colors like green. So this book is technically black and white and red all over, and we're also going to be reading it today. So with this book, we're also focusing on imagination, just like we were last week with our book, The Gruffalo. Last week, the mouse was able to use his imagination to solve problems. This week, we're going to see imagination used a little bit differently. Remember your imagination, you're in complete control over. You can use your imagination to think of things that aren't real or made up. In this story right here, we have Emma Kate and her imaginary friend. So I want you to look at the front cover, find Emma Kate and find her imaginary friend. In this story, they do a lot of things together, but there is a fun surprise at the end. Let's read to find out what happens. Our focus for this story is just like last week's story, The Gruffalo. It's using our imagination. So last week we learned how the mouse was able to use his imagination to solve his problems. In this week's story, we're going to learn how to use our imagination to experience new places, but specifically experiencing new things. Emma Kate is my best friend. We do just about everything together. We walk to school together every morning. She sits next to me in class. We play together at recess. We sit together in the cafe gymatorium at lunch. When we get home from school, we ride our bikes together. We do our homework together too. Sometimes, even on a school night, she stays over. She loves my pet mouse, Gwendolyn. We take long walks and watch the clouds in the sky. Most of all, we love to read together. One day, Emma Kate got a real sore throat, and so did I. When we went to see the doctor, the doctor said that we would have to get our tonsils out. We take our baths together, then we climb into bed. Sometimes when nighttime comes and I'm in my bed, I tell Mama and Daddy all about Emma Kate and the things we do together. They just smile and say, you and your Emma Kate, you have such an imagination. Good night, sweet pea, sweet dreams. Then they both give me a big kiss and tuck me in. And I dream of Emma Kate. On the next page in our book, our author left us a note. It says, when Patricia Polacco was a little girl, her imaginary friend was an elephant, fashioned after the main character in her favorite book, Dr. Seuss's Horton Hatches the Egg. She and her elephant did everything together. They ate together, played together, climbed trees, and fell out of trees together too. Like many of Patricia Polacco's legendary stories, Emma Kate came straight from her own childhood, and this particular story holds a special place in her heart as a homage to her long-lost imaginary elephant friend. She travels the country sharing her wonder-filled books and her stories with children and teachers. She resides in Union City, Michigan, and has many goats and ducks, but no elephants, at least visible ones. If you want more information, you can go to her website 
at www.patriciapolacco.com. Wasn't this a really good book? So sometimes authors will add in surprise twists and humor to make the reading more enjoyable. So humor is when they add in something funny. What was a surprise that you realized in this book? A surprise that got me was figuring out that Emma Kate was the imaginary friend and the elephant was the narrator. The narrator is the person that tells the story. So here at the back of the book is a clue that Patricia Polacco left us to let us know that elephant was the one telling the story and Emma Kate was in her imagination. When she says to her mom, I tell mama and daddy all about Emma Kate and the things we do together. They just smile and say, you and your Emma Kate, you have such an imagination. This is the clue that um, Patricia Polacco uses to let us know that the elephant is actually the narrator in the story and Emma Kate is in her imagination. And she lets us know for sure on the next page when she uses the words, and I dream of Emma Kate. So this book was really funny and also really surprising. So she used her imagination in a way to think of something that she had never had before, which was an imaginary friend named Emma Kate. So you have a few assignments to finish after this. The first thing I'll need you to do is go into Google Classroom, finish the Emma Kate assignment. You'll also need to go into Flipgrid. And in Flipgrid, I'd like you to rate this story out of five stars and also tell me who would your imaginary friend be? What would you guys do? Draw a picture of your imaginary friend. Is she gonna look like Emma Kate? Or is he gonna look like an elephant? Or are they gonna be something completely from your imagination that we've never seen before? Those are your things to do today. And you also have one language review assignment as well on Google Classroom.